Here's a diagram of a submarine, and not every submarine is exactly this particular size and shape, but the thing to point out here are these ballast tanks. There's what's called the main ballast tanks, and there's a couple of them here in the middle, and then the forward trim tank and the rear trim tank. And what they can do is they can change the average density of the submarine by pumping water into the ballast tanks. They'll pump seawater directly into the tanks and fill them up, and then the submarine becomes heavier. They take the air out of the tanks because it's displaced with seawater coming into the tanks. And when the submarine becomes heavier or its average density increases, it becomes less buoyant and they can make the sub go down that way. And when they want the sub to surface, they need to increase the buoyancy of the sub. So they pump the water out of the ballast tanks and replace it with air and then the average density of the submarine becomes less than that of water and the submarine comes to the surface. And then the forward and rear trim tanks are used to balance the forces. For example, if they were to pump all the water out of the forward tank, there would be more buoyant force upward on the bow, on the front of the ship, than on the back and the nose would start to rise. And likewise, if they were to pump more water into the forward tank, and pump water out of the tank in the rear, then there would be more buoyancy in the back and more weight in the front and it would start to nose down. So they can control what they call the trim, its angle up and down as it moves through the water. They control that not just with the rudders back here and the, um, what you see is called the tail planes. They, they, can, they can control it that way but also with the trim tanks by controlling the buoyancy in different parts of the submarine.